okay let's see in a real patient uh, what uh, we have already seen in uh, the paper scheme the paper model in the last article so we have to measure the length of the recession at one millimeter and report the, the measure from the tip of the papilla in one side and in the other and pushing a little bit with the probe on the gingival tissue you can mark the, the direction of the incisions then we start with the incision two, two horizontal incisions three millimeters long and two vertical incision going above the mucogingival line for about five to six millimeters in case you can uh, elongate a little bit more these uh, vertical incisions then we have to raise the surgical papilla remember what's what the surgical papilla are they are the new papilla that will be overlapped to the uh, over the anatomical papilla and we raise them only with the blade you see i'm using just the blade and not the tweezers or not the periosteum elevator now i must elevate a little bit of full thickness flap so the surgical papillar split thickness instead this part is full thickness i have found the, the bone crest and then i expose the bone for three millimeters now I must go on with the blade cutting the deep muscular insertions so remember the muscle the, the mimic muscle and we cut the deep muscular insertions holding the blade parallel to the bone and the sliding on uh, the bone surface checking everything from underneath so you keep the flap elevated with the tweezers the surgical tweezers and you cut all the muscular insertions from the bone letting there the periosteum and detaching all the flap the, the muscles now underneath the flap we have the muscles so if we move coronally the flap we also move coronally the muscles and we don't want these muscles underneath our root coverage because we want there all the connective tissue and the epithelium um, the mucosa and the submucosa and so now I must detach the muscles from the inner surface of the flap sliding surfing with the blade parallel uh, to the superficial tissue and checking the blade this time from transparency so you see I, I'm not looking underneath the flap but I'm looking for, um, from outside these are the muscles I'm keeping the muscles with the tweezer that are independent and they go in the deepness of the flap and the flap can move coronally without any other stuff underneath so only the mucosa and the submucosa tissue now a little bit of root planing a very very gentle root planing and the next step is the deepitalization of the papilla so with the blade you start from the apical portion of the papilla and you cut away a very slim very thin layer of epithelium finishing with the microsurgical scissors so scissors are useful because you have to to get all the way to the tip the very tip of of the papilla in this way okay everything every all, all the all the epithelium has been eliminated you see and we have a flap that is partial thickness all around and full thickness uh, only apical to the recession now is the time of the connective tissue graft I have harvested it from the palate I have uh, de-epitalized it and now I fix it 
to the recipient bed with 7O suture, uh, 8mm needle and 7O suture with two sutures anchored to the anatomical papilla and another suture is fundamental, is mandatory to curve the connective tissue graft because the cementoenamide junction of the canine is very curved and so you need to bend the connective tissue graft that must follow the, the shape of the CJ of the canine and also the shape of the gingival margin or of the new gingival margin of the flap. The first two sutures are apical in the vertical incisions and are anchored to the lateral periosteum. You perform them keeping the flap in its final position with the tweezers. You see I, I hold the, the, the anatomical papilla over the sorry the surgical papilla over the anatomical papilla and I perform the suture. Once you have performed the first two sutures with 6 O suture, you take the 7 O 7 O suture and you go on with simple interrupted sutures all along the vertical incision. You can go very, very close to the um, gingival margin of the other teeth because it's not a problem being the flap completely tension free. So all the tension has been broken, has been eliminated by the first two sutures and these very slim sutures with the 7 suture are very, all tension free. Also the, the slim suture is tension free, you, you may, you can note that uh, the, the flap is in its final position without the slim suture and to perform the slim suture, um, you, so you need the slim suture only to, to close the flap itself, to push the, the surgical papilla over the anatomical papilla and to perform it you start on the, in the basis of the surgical papilla, in this case the mesial one. You engage the anatomical papilla, go around the tooth and come back uh, buccally underneath the contact point with the bottom of the needle. Then you again engage the surgical papilla on, the, in, on this basis, the, the distal one. The, uh, you engage the anatomical papilla, you, again you go around the tooth, you come back buccally underneath the mesial contact point and you tie the knot okay being careful to have the wire passing in the middle of the surgical papilla okay now the the, the recession is over covered but it's not a problem because during the healing uh, it will contract a little bit in the apical direction. You see underneath the flap, we have a very thin flap with no muscles underneath, but only the connective tissue graft and everything is very beautiful. Okay, bye-bye and kick asses.